Billy, the historical attack line has been science toward religion. And as science expands, religion contracts. And this has been a historical trend, and now religion seems to be pushed into various corners. Uh, can that go in reverse? Is there anything at all that religion, whether it's in its, uh, with the wisdom traditions of history or current thinking, can any of that have an impact on science? Uh, sure, I think there are two levels that, to approach that. One is the level of the individual or even a society um, in terms of the motivation. Why do science? Why invest so much of your energy into um, activities that can often be very, take many decades and sometimes be very tedious? Um, and one of the motivations historically has certainly been religious motivations. And uh, so that, that, that just is. Many scientists are in fact religious and even if they don't call themselves religious in a conventional sense, they often exhibit religious types of attitudes, which I often call altruistic fidelity to the phenomena, <laughs> where, where one loves it's a sense of awe, really. a, sen a sense of awe and a, a sense of I don't matter, the phenomena matters, mm -hmm. and I'm a channel for the phenomena to speak its reality into human. <laughs> sounds like a spiritual medium. Cer certainly sounds like it. <laughs> so I, I, I think that that's um, that's an aspect, and it will always be. There's always a spiritual dimension to the scientific quest. And I think that's something we should celebrate more of, in fact. There's an, another level, which I think you're really getting at, is to, to, can religion inform um, the content of science? And uh, there, there's uh, two levels that I, 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 I think we need, to, we need to separate. There are lots of different sciences and they act differently. But uh, in, in some sense, science is, as a singular is, uh, to paraphrase Henry Ford, one damn fact after another. It's just a big collection of facts. And how do we interpret all those facts together is something different than science. That's now something closer to philosophy, metaphysics, or theology. And there, I think there's a lot of um, productive levels in which uh, religious uh, uh, worldviews and, and uh, scriptures can play a role in actually interpreting the content of science not in, not in its specifics, but in the general framework of how you, inter how you understand it. Now, some scientists would say that the only benefit that philosophy has on science is when it keeps other philosophy, and particularly religion, out of the, no out of the nose of science. Well, uh, that's, again, perhaps a little too simplistic. I, I have studied philosophy of science, and um, one does not need philosophy of science to be a good scientist. Um, it, it's kind of like analogous to speaking human languages. You can know nothing about linguistics and speak English very well. But still, there is a discipline known as linguistics that's very useful, especially when you want to compare different languages. So when we talk about science in the singular versus science in particular disciplines, we're, we're already beginning to make philosophical statements. And I think... Uh, it's, um, it's, it's a different, different kettle of fish than, than was presented. Is there any value in the thousands of years of religious tradition, whether it's in Eastern religions or Western Judeo-Christian religions, Islamic religion, can any of the content that these scholars, these holy people, these clergy have had over this time, that can have any impact whatsoever on the content of science today? Sure, um, certainly in the human sciences, most of all. But in terms of, say, particle physics or cosmology, not, not so much, no. Uh, but when, we, when the human is the subject matter, then we have what we have in religion is millennia of experimentation with the self, with others, with the divine. Uh, so there's a lot of um, actually important scientific data to be um, gleaned from the religious traditions if we want to understand the human person, the human mind, human society better. But if, if I look at science and the flow of science, although it's not linear, there are middle ages, there are times of blackness and darkness, but in general, over a long time, broad brush, it's progress. And you can clearly see going from lack of knowledge to more knowledge progressively. In religion, to me, it's not that clear. Uh, in fact, some would argue that the results of religion in recent centuries have been more negative uh, in terms of the, what's happened than in the past. So uh, can you, in good conscience, say that religion has made any progress during this period of time? 
Well, um, to find progress first. Uh, I mean, accumulating knowledge is one thing. Accumulating wisdom, uh, compassion, morality is a whole different kettle of fish. And Fair, it, but it's, it, it's whatever your content. It, it, sci it, individual scientists uh, can be as flawed as any individual religious person. Uh, so, I mean, you know, the, 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 our human strengths and weaknesses are kind of evenly distributed. So fair, fair enough. But, independent of your profession. But each one has their own content aspects. Science has its content, and its content has progressively improved over the long term. Can you say the same thing about religion? Has the content of religion, putting aside individual how they apply it, has the content of religion at all improved over the millennia that we've humans have had religious uh, uh, interests? Yeah, I don't think we've solved any of the profound questions that religion deals with. Have we even made any progress? I, I'm not sure how you define progress. Maybe well, can you, may, you can may, maybe some people have. Maybe Martin Luther King Jr. did. Maybe Mohandas Gandhi did. Um, you know, there's, there are... We know there, what there, progress there, there is in science, right? There are people... Uh, you know, we, we, we largely accept today the spiritual equality of women and other uh, racial groups. Slavery has been abolished. But is that a religion? Can you, can you put that at the doorstep of religion? That I, I don't think you get an abolition movement without... Christianity, I mean, in historical fact, the abolition movement was profoundly influenced by, by Christianity. I don't think you get a, you even get a, a theory of um, uh, the theory of government that that we have in the United States based on natural rights, um, natural law, philosophy. I don't think you get that without religion either, on some level. So th there, you see a profound disconnect, by the way, in our society, in the scientific culture, and the political culture. And that's a that's a that's a danger for science. It's a danger for society that we have such a profound disconnect between those two. And so, what happens? What does that bode for the future? Uh, confusion <laughs> uh, at a time when we're increasingly powerful, and um, uh, to do good and to do ill. And uh, it's, uh, it's it doesn't make me. It's one of the reasons why I do this work <laughs> because I think it's vital that our religious instincts or inclinations uh, be made more harmonious with that other side of our, our, our person, the side to, that wants to know how things work. And uh, so, so you see religion's approach more in the social, political aspect of human development, but not in really understanding the metaphysics of reality. Well, again, the metaphysics is not science. The metaphysics is an interpretation of science. And some metaphysical systems can be better or worse than others. You can't simply prove, you know, my metaphysics is right and yours is wrong. Uh, so it's a question of interpretation. And uh, there again, I think that there's a lot of value that uh, religious history and the, 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 the continuous history of, of uh, interpretation of, of scriptures or other other insights is really important. We need to recapture some of that wisdom and mm -hmm. insight uh, if we're going to appro uh, appropriately um, uh, integrate uh, all this uh, explosion of scientific information today. Albert Einstein said famously, science without religion is lame. Religion without science is blind. What do you make of that? Well, I think it's a good quote. <laughs> I very much appreciate it. What, what does it mean to you? Uh, any religion that, that ignores the content of contemporary science uh, will be, become antiquated, I believe, and it's not, not a healthy situation. But to say you have to integrate the content of the science is not to say that this, that content has all the answers. So I think there are limits on what science can tell us. Where is that boundary? Um, the boundary is often with your subjective experience of, of the world and how you understand that. Um, of course, you, Robert, you, you have a background in the neurosciences, but we're a long way from being able to uh, connect our own thoughts and, uh, to, uh, to uh, the firing of neurons. True, true, but does that mean everybody sets their own boundaries, that I, I have my place where science can go and no further, and somebody else is a different place, and it's all sort of arbitrary, or is there some absolute reality that we can come to which defines a boundary between sci where science should end and religion should start? Um, 
I'm, I'm all in favor of pushing the scientific envelope as far as possible, even when studying religious phenomena is the subject matter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, push it as far as possible. I, I don't see any fundamental threat that there's anything we're going to discover in science that's going to challenge the, uh, uh, the basic religious uh, spiritual attitude towards life. Uh, it might challenge specific interpretations of this or that scripture. That's okay. I'm not, I don't have any problem with that either. But I, I just don't see that there's any reason to uh, set up a, a conflict. That these are they're not they're, they don't they don't even inhabit the same uh, territory in that sense. Uh, they they have to be conversant with each other, but they don't inhabit the same territory.